What is the comic premise? The comic premise is the gap between real reality and comic reality. It's a rule change that takes normal reality and turns it into something else. Uh, you, here's a good example. In the situation comedy Married with Children, which I'm sure you know, uh, if you don't know, it's about horrible people who somehow manage to live together. The comic premise is these people who have no business spending five minutes in each other's company somehow manage to hold it together. Real reality is not like that. If these people were real people in the real world, they would run screaming from one another. The comic reality says to the audience, if you will accept the premise that these horrible people can live together, we're going to give you some fun. So the comic premise is the change of reality, the altered reality that the comedian offers in order to welcome the audience into his or her or their world. On the level of stand-up, as an example, you can find a comic premise in something like just when you thought airlines couldn't get any worse. The audience understands, you're not going to tell me what really happens with airlines. You're going to tell me an exaggerated version of it, a, a, an alternate reality version of it, a comic version of it. So the comic premise is airlines are even worse than you think. On that level, it's easy to understand that we're not gonna be talking about air, air travel in a straight sense. We're gonna talk about it in an exaggerated or bent sense. So the comic premise is the thing you do to bend reality. What are the components of a comic premise? The main component of a comic premise is a rule change. In this world, uh, let's take another example from, from a, a well-known sitcom. We can think about Kramer from Seinfeld. His comic pr premise, his comic perspective or filter is there's nothing I can't do. Like, I'm Kramer. Everybody knows he's Kramer. And because we know he has that attitude about himself, we will allow him to do any bizarre thing he wants to do, and the more bizarre, the better. It all stems from a single rule change. In the real world, this loser doofus does not prosper. They don't. They just don't. They're losers. They're doofuses. Nobody gives them the time of day. In the world of, in the comic world of the story of Seinfeld, this loser doofus triumphs every time. So the rule change is losers win. Uh, now, let's take that as an example. Let's say we, we like the rule change, losers win, but we want to make something new out of it. We could say something like the world's poorest family wins the lottery. In the real world, that's not happening, for all intents and purposes. As a friend of mine once said, he did the mathematical modeling for the California lottery, and he said, to five significant figures, your chances of winning are the same whether you play or not. So, <laughs> so we know in real reality it's not going to happen, but we allow the comic premise to change the situation. Normal poor family, all of a sudden they're endowed with great riches. Doesn't matter how, we're going to watch poor people be rich and it's going to be fun. That's what a comic premise does. It takes normal reality and turns it upside down. What's the difference between a great comic premise and a bad comic premise? This almost feels like an SAT question. <laughs> SAT has, actually, what I'm reflecting on now is I do a, a lot of work uh, coaching people for interviews. And one of the things that I talk about is when you get a hard question, you're going to want to blab. You're going to want to say stuff that doesn't matter. So, um, well, let's see. And instead, it's good just to have a moment's silence or talk about something completely irrelevant and stall while you're trying to figure out what you really want to say, which is exactly what I'm doing now. Because I don't really know what is the difference between a good premise and a bad premise, except as we said before, a good premise, a good idea will stand the weight of development and stand the test of time. That is to say, if it's interesting to me now and it's interesting next week and next year, or funny now, funny next week and next year, then that's a good premise. If it's funny now and upon further, further investigation it stops being funny, it's not such a good premise. I have an example. I was working on a joke about... Uh, uh, virtually meaningless superpowers. Like if you could have any superpower, what would you choose? Would you choose something dumb? And, and I said, I would choose the superpower of the ability to carry groceries on a bicycle. And somebody said, well, that's just balance. 
<laughs> and I realized, okay, that's not a very good superpower, not a good premise. But there is something funny in the poor guy who had the chance to pick his one superpower and he wasted it on balance because he thought it was something better than that. And that's a good premise because that's something I can work with. I can think about somebody who makes a big mistake and suffers the consequences rather than thinking about the mistake itself. You're asking me a question and as I'm answering it, I'm kind of unpacking it. A good premise is about something sustainable. A bad premise is not about something sustainable. Okay. So you talked about earlier uh, job interviews. Mm -hmm. So if we, I don't know, did you see Emily the Criminal? Did you see the opening scene? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So she's in this job interview and, and it, it really sort of establishes who she is in that moment. Mm -hmm. And the, the, they, they kind of uh, show that they have this like file, they've, they've done their research on her. And um, you talked about how, let's see, I'm not even sure where I'm going. Now, now I'm kind of stumped. We're but, in it but, together. There are okay, no bad okay, outcomes. See, there you go. And I'm willing to, to be okay with that. But it was a great scene in that you learn who she is in that moment. What you're speaking of is something called a character key. And this is something else that I teach and talk about all the time. When you're creating characters, your first job is to introduce the, them to the audience in a way that the audience will understand. You want to tell them two important things in a comedy. Those two important things are how they will behave in all situations and how they will be funny in all situations. And a good character key will do all of that. So when we think about that opening moment, we're getting everything we need to know in order to predict the stories that will take place in this world and also the character perspective that will give us value on a comic level. Where writers go wrong is thinking they don't need that or they should delay it. They try to introduce the characters without introducing them. Let's just imagine a scene that starts, I walk into the room and I say hello to you and you say hello back and I say, how is your day? And you say, not so bad. And I say, that's good. And then I go to the refrigerator for something to eat. I have spent a lot of time not defining myself. But if I walk in and try to open the refrigerator door on the wrong side, and say, who changed the sides of the refrigerator door or something funny? I'm telling you, I don't know what's going on, and I think I know what's going on, and that's going to drive me into mistake after mistake and story after story. Or, or I, I see you, I say, hey, how was your day? And you launch into, you know what's wrong with the world, and you have a whole manifesto exactly. of everything that's wrong, and you're up on your soapbox. Boy, and, and I was just about to check my email, and I just wanted to be polite. You, you, did, you did so many great things there. Let's deconstruct it. You boiled the character key down to two lines. How was your day? Let me tell you what's wrong with the world. That's so genius because how was your day creates an expectation. And the expectation is we're going to hear fine. We're going to hear polite stuff. When I tell you, let me tell you what's wrong with the world. I'm defeating expectation. Well, you as the creator are defeating the audience's expectation. Immediately you're engaged. Then the words, let me tell you what's wrong with the world. Perfect character key, perfect predictor of what will happen next. This is a guy who's going to complain about everything and be wrong and be in conflict with the world and be just hilariously misguided for 150 episodes. Let's go.